now we shall discuss about the himalayan rivers as i mentioned earlier we have two major broad categorization of the rivers the himalayan rivers and the peninsular rivers so among the himalayan rivers the first most important one is river indus the river indus originates in tibet that is at lake manas sarovar and after it originating from here in the manas sarovar it moves on into the indian land in the ladakh district that is in jammu and kashmir after entering into india various other tributaries of this indus river also from that region it joins in to the indus river in the kashmir region those tributaries which are coming from tibet to india are jaskar nubra shiok and hunza jaskar nubra shiok and hunza together join river indus in kashmir region and after joining in the kashmir region then it passes through baltistan and gilgit ranges and enters into the atok region after entering into the atok region it gets divided itself into five major tributaries in the punjab region that is satlas ravi bias chinab and zelam where it provides a huge land with a full fertile and supplies irrigation water continuously for the entire punjab haryana jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh states and later it enters at mithun coat the pakistan and after entering into pakistan it flows towards the southward and then in the east of karachi it joins into the arabian sea where it ends its long journey of 2900 kilometers and it also provides water supply in india for the states like jammu and kashmir punjab himachal pradesh in 1960 india signed an agreement with the pakistan stating that about the indus water india can use only 20% of the indus river water which is been carried from india to the pakistan according to this treaty of indus water treaty india can utilize this 20% of water in the states like punjab himachal pradesh and jammu and kashmir for doing agriculture irrigation practices so this is a brief story of indus journey indus starts its journey at lake manas sarovar in tibet moves on into or enters into india in the westward direction in the ladakh district where it is been joined by its tributaries like jaskar nibra shiok and hunza in the kashmir region and it passes through baltistan and gilgit and enters into the atok where it gets tributaries like satlas ravi bias chinab and zelam and then it finally enters into pakistan at mithun coat and after doing its journey towards the southward in pakistan enters into karachi eastern direction and ends up by joining into the arabian sea it makes a journey of nearly 2900 kilometers covering three countries that is from tibet to india and from india to pakistan in this journey it makes five major tributaries that is satlas ravi bias jhelum and chinab it may also made india and pakistan to sign an agreement that is indus water treaty of 1960 which states clearly that only 20% of the indus water can be utilized by the indians and the rest 80% can be utilized for the pakistan's needs so that's all we have for the indus river system now let us discuss about the second major river that is the himalayan river ganga the river ganga has been widely spread in the entire northern plains so let us see how the journey of ganga starts where it starts what are the tributaries where it has been joined all we shall discuss now river ganga originates from two of its tributaries that is bagirathi and alaknanda bagirathi is getting from himalayan origin and then alaknanda these two join at devaprayaga where they give birth to the river ganga along with this we also have another set of tributaries joining river ganga that is yamuna having its origin from yamunotri glacier and also we have a nepal himalayan belt tributaries also joining river ganga that is gagra gandak and kosi these all originate in nepal himalayan region 
so these all come and join into river ganga at allahabad so we have two set of tributaries joining together to make a very large river that is river ganga one is bagirathi and alaknanda coming at devaprayaga and joining to river ganga's birth happening at devaprayaga and similarly yamunotri's glaciers water entering in the tributary name of yamuna which is running parallelly till it reaches to ganga and then it joins at allahabad along with it the gagra gandak and kosi the nepalayan himal rivers also come and join into river ganga so after joining here from the mountain ranges it starts to come to the normal plain lands river ganga from the higher elevation starts to reach to the lower places at a special place called haridwar so it is taking its birth at devaprayaga where the two tributaries of bagirathi and alaknanda join here and then it enters into the plain lands at haridwar and then it flows towards the larger extent of the east that is still west bengal and in the peninsular plot we also have certain tributaries like betwa and son on the upper lands also and later after entering into west bengal it goes bifurcating its entire course like along with the main course it gets two more bifurcations like bagirathi and hugli bagirathi and hugli river and later the main course enters into bangladesh in bangladesh the name of the river ganga's tributary is meghna and finally it makes a beautiful delta region sundarbans before joining into the bay of bengal region like this it plays a very vital role and then when we discuss about the area where it is covering it makes a very large journey similar to that of river indus that is river indus travels for nearly 2900 kilometers just very close nearby we have a 2500 kilometers journey of river ganga spreading with its various tributaries in the entire northern indian plain and that is the reason why it is rightly also known as indo gangetic plain and if you look at the statistics of the width of the river or the area how many kilometers is it covering ganga is covering nearly 1800 kilometers of width of the entire northern plains and it is very less very hardly it is been tilted that is out of 1800 kilometers the slope is just only for 300 kilometers that is for every 6 kilometers 1 meter of slope can be felt that is the reason why river ganga has many meanders and the oxbow lakes formation basing on the nature of the land where it is traveling so the ganga starts its journey at ambala and finally ends its journey at sundarbans before joining into the bay of bengal so be free cap of river ganga river ganga is been taking its birth at devaprayaga with the joining of its tributaries like bagirathi and alaknanda along with this a set of other tributaries also join river ganga that is at allahabad yamuna from its origin of yamunotri glacier comes running parallelly to the ganga region and finally it ends its journey by joining into river ganga at allahabad along with this we also have certain nepal rivers contributing them like gagra gandak and kosi these all come and join and make the river to make its large journey of 2500 kilometers where from the higher elevations it moves on to the plain lands at a holy place called haridwar and from there it moves on towards the east and enters into west bengal region where it bifurcates its main journey into two more small tributaries that is bagirathi and hugli and then enters into bangladesh naming as meghna there and then finally ends its journey creating a beautiful delta region and enters into bay of bengal region its entire total course of journey is 2500 kilometers its width of area covered is 1800 kilometers the slope is hardly felt so in the 1800 kilometers only 300 meters of the slope is felt that is for every 6 kilometers you find just 1 meter of the slope that you can experience so because of this many of the meanders and the oxbow lakes are formed this is a story of river ganga and its tributaries and it also has upland tributaries like betwa and son it is rightly 
named as Indo Gangetic Plain because Indus and Ganga are the major contributors for the Indian agricultural system in the northern part of India. Now, we shall discuss the third important Himalayan river that is river Brahmaputra. The river Brahmaputra also originates at a very close point where the river Indus originates that is near Lake Mansarovar and then it moves parallelly to the Himalayas. Actually, river Brahmaputra travels a more distance than river Indus but it is travelling outside India so it does not come into our account. So now, it moves on parallel to Himalayas. Then it takes a U-turn at Namcha Barwa mountain range and then it enters into Arunachal Pradesh creating a gorge, creating the gorge and after it creates the gorge, it moves and enters into the mainland that is, it is known as Dihang in the Tibetan region. Later it enters into India by the name of Brahmaputra in the Arunachal Pradesh and the Assam regions. If you look at the journey of Brahmaputra, it is first passing through a very smaller deep valleys and the volume of the water is very less. But as it enters into Indian land, where it passes through a very high rainfall region, so it collects huge amount of water resulting in the formation of the riverine lands in the Assam region. And Majula is a name of a riverine land which is created by river Brahmaputra and it is the largest riverine land inhabited by the people in the world that is Majula, Majula riverine land. So it creates a very large riverine lands and which are very fertile in region and it also carries huge silt and soil and the deposits which makes its river bed to get raised up and which results in the frequent floods in the Brahmaputra flowing regions especially in the states of Assam and finally it enters into Bangladesh by naming itself as Padma and ends up its journey by joining into Bay of Bengal. So it starts its journey at Lake Mansarovar where actually the river Indus also takes its birth. It moves westward, this moves eastward and then it runs parallelly to the Himalayas and finally it enters into the Indian land by creating a gorge at, by taking a U-turn near Namcha Barwa and enters into the Arunachal Pradesh region which is actually known as Dihang in the Tibetan places and later it enters into the Indian it gets named as Brahmaputra in the states of Assam and the Arunachal Pradesh regions and later it passes through Indian land and where we have heavy rainfalls so it collects huge amount of water, soil, silt and everything and it creates a very large deltaic land and the riverine land that is resulting in Majula riverine land resulting in the largest inhabited place in the world of the riverine lands and then it also creates the rise of its riverbed because it collects huge silt and deposits and finally it enters into Bangladesh and gets renamed as Padma and finally ends up its journey by entering into Bay of Bengal. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.